Mark and I met in college. Uh, we dated uh, for, I guess, eight years before we got married. I was in graduate school when studying for my PhD. We adopted William in 2000, and then Emma came along in 2002. William's the big brother. He's just always on the go. Emma is funny, like her dad, actually. <laughs> Emma's a beautiful little girl with a great personality. She has a great sense of humor. She's gregarious. She's full of energy. We were just living a happy life of, uh, you know, people with two young children that are exploring everything, so. That's the way life was before Emma was diagnosed. It was a, like a crisp day in March. We were a little bit late for church, and so there was nobody around. Emma says, Mommy, can I, can I run up the street? I said, sure you can. So she ran to the end of the block, and she waited for us to reach her, and she was panting. And she says, Mommy, I can't walk anymore. I can't go. I said, sure you can. No, Mommy. And then she just collapsed to the ground. Emma, what are you doing? Emma, what are you doing? She looked gray. She had a gray, and her eyes were rolled in the back of her head. Then on the ground, she curled into a fetal position and started to shake. And Mark said to me, I think she's having a seizure. And I had heard this just high-pitched whine. And so I reached out, I picked her up and held her. The nothing like this had ever happened. So when Beth and I, Beth was cradling her, I saw her. We both didn't know, we didn't know what to do. So we get to the ER. And Boom, she went into it again. Mark, Mark. He just ends up running down the street carrying Emma, banging on the ER door to let us in. They had her all wired up to monitor her heart function and everything else. And as she was on the uh, treadmill, I looked at her and she said, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then she let out that same familiar whine and I said, she's going, she's going, she's going into it right now. I was standing by the bedside and uh, one of the doctors came in and he says, wow. And I said, what, what's wow? And he says, wow, look at those pressures. I said, pressures, what pressures are you talking about? He said, in the RV. I said, do you mean pulmonary hypertension? And he looked at me and he had forgotten that I worked in the field. And that wasn't the way I should have found out about it. But I did. And my heart sunk. Mark wasn't in the room, so I quickly left to go find him. And I said, Mark, it's pulmonary hypertension, and he just looks at me. I said, there's no cure, and he just looks at me. I said, they die of this disease. I don't think we really know enough about the disease in general or even about her to try to make 20, 30, 40 year predictions. It's like everything in medicine, we're, we're just gonna have to let time unfold. But I'm quite optimistic for her. She has gotten down before. Um, and asked, why me, why me? But she gets through that and, and moves forward. She knows that she has this disease for the rest of her life. I think she just loves life and wants to just live it.